Well, I am in the beautiful display garden at Out in the Garden Nursery with Carol. And Carol, it just looks stunning. And it's midsummer, and it still looks lovely. Thank you. And really, um, I think if you just keep it up, all of us can have nice plants like this in our gardens. I've worked really hard in the nursery to add plants for all year round interest. So we've got a whole table of them here. Um, that are things that are just coming into bloom now and right. we're at the end of July. So perfect for us to add color in right. our summer gardens. Right. So what is this tall one? That's this, gorgeous. This is a Eubatorium or a Joe Pieweed. This one is called Pink Frost just starting to bloom. It mm -hmm. probably doesn't bloom quite as big as the species, but it has this beautiful variegated foliage. And they're really wonderful because they're completely deciduous, but they'll make a great screen for like summer. If you have places sure. on your deck or something, you don't want to, you want to screen for the summer, that will do it for you. Plus it'll bring in the bees and the butterflies. Oh, perfect. And then blue flowers. Blue oh my gosh, there's not a lot of blue flowers. There's not a lot. These are caryopteris. It's one of my favorite groups of plants. I've got, three varieties here, but I've got another five or six in the nursery because wow. they're just one of my favorites. I forgot my really nice variegated one. But so this one is um, Little Miss Sunshine, a nice gold leaf just starting to bloom. This is Longwood Bloom. These are going to be both in the f um, three to four foot range. And then in the front is Beyond Midnight. It's a little more compact. You can see it's a little darker foliage, a little darker um, flower as well. And these two are bee magnets. They will just be literally Whoa. swarming with bees and, and all different kinds. It's really fun to watch. And sun for the Joe yep. Pie and for Yep, these? and they're sun and actually they're quite drought tolerant. The Joe oh. Pie weed uh, it comes from the East Coast that likes a little more summer water, but it's pretty tough. And both of these, once they're well established, they're not a big water user. Joy Pie weed will let you know when it needs a drink. Okay, and I love the blue next to this yellow. This is a dwarf solidago or dwarf goldenrod. Most of them are usually up in the five or six foot range. And this is like two, maybe two and a half. And it's another bee magnet, bright color, really drought tolerant, once well established as well. Nice, and then going towards allium, I don't think about alliums this time of year. Exactly, these are, there's three different ones here. I've been trying to play with them to see what the difference is. There's a little bit of succession in blooming. Um, if you planted all of them, you'll really extend your bloom time, but they're long bloomers. Again, the bees love them. A little bit of foliage and height difference in them, but they'll take a sunny, dry spot and, and bloom for weeks and weeks and weeks in the summer. And I love that you leave all the flowers up. I mean, you have some mm -hmm. from earlier yep. and they're really cool kind of texture Sure, even though they're dried right. in the garden. I leave them until I can't stand looking at it anymore. <laughs> and then grasses. Grasses, grasses are really coming into their own this time of year. I love grasses. I think they're one of those groups that's really overlooked. I mean, this is Boudelia. This is Blonde Ambition. Cute. I mean, it's just amazing. Look at the, the, the texture on that in a mass. It's really, really impressive. And these flowers will hold for months. Nice. And, and it's, it's very drought tolerant. And it's a short one too. Yeah, it's that's a, good like, one. under three feet. Right. And this in the front is actually a dwarf rubecchia. Oh. Um, we're used to goldstrom, which is about twice as, as high. This is little goldstrom. But sometimes you don't want really huge things or you want something a little tighter. So it's, it behaves and, and blooms just like goldstrom, but it's about half the size. Uh, and sun too. And sun as well. Yeah, pretty, all the grasses. At this point, everything we're talking about today is sun okay. And I love variegated grasses because yes. they're interesting right away. They are. This is um, one of my favorite. This is Molina variegata. Um, it's if it was a evergreen or a little more winter interested, it'd be a perfect plant, but it's not. But what I've found, everything you read about it says it wants moist, well-drained. I have it in a really dry spot. It gets watered three or four times a summer, oh. and it's gorgeous. Nice, nice. And then a striped one, that's a pretty one This too. is a newer miscanthus. There's lots and lots of striped miscanthus. This one is band width, which is a nice, because it's a little smaller. It's in the two to three foot range instead of the five to six or seven to eight, like some <laughs> of them are. So it's much more compact, would be a much nicer container plant. Oh, and it, it does stripe up really early. Some of them don't stripe up until late in the summer or until the plant's several years old. Ah, oh, true. And then a another flowering one at the end? Yeah, the one in the front, this is, um, Penicetum carly rose, and it's one of my all-time favorites. I actually love it with the blue of the oh, caryopteris. Sure. It will bloom all summer. It's one of the earliest grasses to bloom, and it will have flowers on it from mid-June till frost. Wow, wonderful. And then I like this one. We put a whole bunch together mm -hmm. just to kind of show the coloring. So what is this one? This is a new panicum called Hot Rod, and it's a little taller. I've been growing um, burgundy ribbons for a couple years. It's about three, three and a half feet, but this is going to be up in the four to six foot range. I haven't put it in the garden here in our, yet in our climate so I have a feeling we're gonna be pushing that six foot yeah. range and then they just starting to bloom they just have a really nice little airy bloom um, they're quite columnar compared to a lot of the grasses too so it can really be a nice screening or um, accent plant 
And then when do you take these down? I mean, I leave them up all winter. I until... leave them most of the winter until what really I leave them till I can't stand looking at them anymore because <laughs> it depends on what our fall and winter does. Sometimes Definitely. we'll have a really hard early frost and they'll look terrible in October and other times they'll look great till January, February. Ah. So I, I usually just wait till we have a nice day sometime in February and go cut them back down. Ah. Now out in the garden nursery isn't about plants this weekend. So what's going on tomorrow? It's our seventh annual wine and cheese in the garden. Um, we bring a big party in the garden. We have two blues bands. Oh. We have have three wineries, a cidery, all, several different kinds of food um, from baked goods, hot dogs, a little bit of everything. Plus you can shop in the nursery to live blues music. <laughs> and what's the times? They're from noon to five. Uh, and where can we find out all this information? The most detailed information is on my Facebook page, but the basic information is also on my website. Uh, well, you know, you can go to Garden Time, click over to their website or the Facebook page. You got to come out. It's just beautiful. You'll be in the shade under these gorgeous oaks. So it'll be a great time tomorrow. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming. Thank you.